It was August 2007 and APA was in San Francisco. It was seven o'clock in the morning and that was East Coast time, so Ellen and I were up, we'd had breakfast, we'd worked out at the gym, and now we were out for a walk, or rather a climb up Knob Hill to wait for daybreak. At Grace Cathedral that early morning, we discovered something that has captivated my imagination ever since. Before that morning, I didn't know anything about the labyrinth. Since then, I've become a tiny bit obsessed with it. So for the next few minutes, I want to share with you why I think the labyrinth is a compelling metaphor for my career development, and perhaps it will be a useful metaphor for you as well. When we talk about career development in Western cultures like ours, what are the metaphors that come to mind? Well, the first one that pops into my mind is the ladder. We talk about climbing the ladder to success. In this metaphor, the rugged individual climbs solo with great effort, rung by rung, up and up and up to the top, unless you're a member of a non-dominant group and then you hit a glass ceiling and you have to break through that. Another common metaphor in Western discourse is the maze. Many people think that the labyrinth is a maze, but it is not. A maze is composed of many blind alleys and dead ends. The maze is a problem to be solved, a puzzle. It requires a series of decisions to be made, and if you make the wrong decision, you have to turn around, you hit a dead end, you have to go back, start over. Now my story about my career development arguably has some of elements of some of these metaphors but I find it much more useful and meaningful to understand my own career development not as a ladder to climb or a puzzle to solve, but as a meandering but purposeful series of switchbacks like the labyrinth. I left high school at the end of my junior year and started college in 1977. Like most of the emerging adults that I know, I was confident and certain I was going to be a concert pianist and a professor of music. This certainty is what you may experience when you take your first step into the labyrinth. Look, the first steps, it looks like you're just going to go right to the center. <laughs> but no, in spite of earning a piano performance degree, the feedback I got was, I was not destined to be a concert pianist. <laughs> so instead, I became a Southern Baptist church musician and director of church ministries, which is what they call women with advanced seminary degrees who are ineligible for ordination because they are, well, women. Rather than a dead end or glass ceiling, though, I credit my earliest career experiences in Southern Baptist churches with the awakening of my radical feminist consciousness. <laughs> Following this conversion experience, <laughs> my next step took me out of the Southern Baptist Church, and I was confident and certain that like other ex-Southern Baptist ministers I knew, I would become a pastoral counselor until I realized that the training program that was available to me at that time was not interested in training female chaplains and pastoral counselors. However, Georgia State University had a small satellite master's program in community counseling. I signed up for evening classes and started chipping away at a master's degree one or two classes at a time. My instructors were all counseling psychologists with thriving private practices in the community. And since this was the 1980s, before the advent of managed care, they all had big houses and <laughs> swimming pools in their backyards. I wanted to grow up to be just like them. <laughs> I pursued my PhD in counseling psychology at the University of Tennessee, confident and certain that I too would one day have a private practice and a swimming pool. <laughs> However, when I finished my postdoc, I took a very fearful and uncertain step into a faculty position at the University of Kentucky and that fearful, unsure, uncertain step has brought me endless challenge and great satisfaction, 
not as the music professor that I was certain I would be, but as the professor of counseling psychology that I never imagined I could be. In the labyrinth, there's no wrong turns. There's no dead ends. In walking the labyrinth, I sense what I can't see, that each twist and even 180 degree turn along the way is somehow leading me inward to the center, to that place where I find my deepest authentic self and then bring that authentic self back out into the world of work. The other reason I love the labyrinth is my career metaphor is that you don't walk the labyrinth by yourself. We may be at different places on the labyrinth, but we are all on the path and therefore all connected to each other. We never go it alone. My three nominators, for instance, are all brilliant counseling psychologists and exceptional leaders who have inspired and encouraged me. Dr. Kathy Bischke, Dr. Sharon Horn, and Dr. Don Szymanski. I also have smart, funny colleagues and faculty to work with at the University of Kentucky who are teaching me and challenging me to be better and do better step by step. Now please let me introduce to you and present the most influential person in my life, Dr. Ellen Riggle, and she's here in the flesh if you would like to meet her. In 2000, shortly after joining the faculty at UK, I got a grant to study same-sex couple relationships and I was desperately seeking local same-sex couples to interview. I had exhausted my own resources and I was truly getting nervous. I sent the announcement about the study to a couple of my senior colleagues at UK and one of them immediately blasted it out to all the national listservs and contacts in her address book before she realized that I needed local couples who could come into the lab for a face-to-face -face interview. Within an hour, I had hundreds of same-sex couples from all across the country who were willing to participate in my study. The only problem was I didn't have a study for them. So here I was. I had a funded study with no participants and participants with no study. Long story short, I called Ellen and we went for a walk and by the end of the day, we had launched a research program that is now in its 16th year. During that time, step by step, together, we have interviewed and surveyed thousands of same-sex couples and LGBTQ individuals. We've published over 60 papers together. We wrote a couple of books. We've traveled all over the U.S. giving talks about positive LGBTQ identity and about marriage policy and same-sex couple relationships. We've trained graduate students in our prison lab. We've also created a life together as a couple and as a family. Now, graduate students and early career psychologists, I really didn't see any of that coming. <laughs> None of that was part of my strategic plan or my long or short-term goals. Not that there's anything wrong with those. But I'm grateful that many of my short and long-term goals never materialized and that unexpected, surprising, and wonderful things did. I imagine that some of my fellow fellows in this room would also admit that they never planned to, to end up where they are doing what they're doing. Perhaps you would join me in encouraging the graduate students and early career professionals in this room to trust the process. Even though you may never quite be sure where you are at any particular point in time, you are on the path. When you walk the labyrinth, there are moments where you think you're just about to walk into the center, but no, in the next few steps, you're way back out at the edge, as seemingly as far away from the center as you can possibly get. In the labyrinth, there is one and only one choice. Will I take the next step, trusting that the process will take me where I need to be? Walking the labyrinth grips and grounds me in something that's really hard to put words to. That's the purpose of a powerful metaphor. For me, the labyrinth symbolizes the ongoing and unfinished business of finding and expressing an authentic self in the context of my professional life. In the career labyrinth, there are no wrong turns, 
You can't mess it up. Just take the next step.